10 o'clock. I will call the meeting to order. The chair notes there's a quorum present and let's do the flag salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, and liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Okay, uh, 2.0 is additions and revisions to the agenda. Do you guys have anything? I don't have anything. Mm -hmm. Okay. 3.0 is correspondence and public comment. Individuals wishing to address the county court may do so at this time and at other times throughout the meeting. Speakers are asked to raise your hand to be recognized by the chair, give your name and address, and limit comments to three minutes. For those who are signing in uh, via Zoom, if you dialed in, it's star six to unmute yourself or uh, the unmute is in the lower left-hand corner of your Zoom platform. Um, and then I always remind folks that we are informal here. So as we move through the agenda, if there's an item that you want to provide feedback on or ask a question, uh, please feel free, we welcome that. So with that, is there any initial public comment? see any, um, and then we don't have anything for correspondence. So let's move into consent agenda. We didn't have any questions to do? I'm not, no. I just wanted to thank, um, I did want to acknowledge Jillian Durfee for volunteering to yeah. be on the transportation so fund. So is that the only person we have on that committee at this point? Yes. It's the only person that responded to any of the Outreach and that committee no one holds how many? Five to seven. Okay. I've reached out, but um, I, did, I, I failed in my reach out, so I'll try, try a different one. Um, anyway, I would uh, move to approve the consent agenda. I'll second. It's been moved and seconded that we approve the consent agenda, which consists of consider approval of December 15th, 2021 regular meeting minutes, consider approval of January bills pending review, Consider appointment of Nathan Hammer as Gillen County Budget Officer. Designate voting precincts Arlington number one, East Condon number six, West Condon number seven. Designate county roads outside of incorporated areas of Arlington, Condon, and Lone Rock as road district number one. Designate Gillen County depositories uh, as Bank of Eastern Oregon, U.S. Bank, and LGIP. Designate newspapers of record as the Times Journal and Eastern Oregonian. Consider appointment of Ron McDermott, Robin Ordway, and Kathy Stinnett as Justice Court Pro Tems. Consider approval of contract between Gillum County and Community Counseling Solutions Incorporated. Consider appointment of Deline Durfee to the Gillum County Statewide Transportation Improvement Fund Advisory Committee effective January 1, 2022 through December 31st, 2023. Is there further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay, move into unfinished business 5.1, which is consider approval of bid for elected officials salary survey. So as you recall, during our last meeting, we discussed this. We had received um, a proposal from uh, HR Answers. During our meeting, there was a question about whether that bid uh, included state uh, comparisons. I reached back out to the contact there and they said yes, that the, the 45 to 50, uh, 4,500 to 5,500 did include um, collecting state comparables as well. So um, yeah, so that was my follow-up and I wasn't sure if there was anything else that we needed to follow up we, on. Uh, we're gonna try to get another bid, but we're, that was part of the discussion last time. I think where we had left it was seeing if North Central Public Health if we could get um, how much North Central Public Health paid for, for One Tree Hill. You had volunteered to follow up with North Central Public Health. <laughs> 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 so, so, 68, <laughs> it happens, it happens. <laughs> I'm 40, I need to do the same thing. <laughs> Um, so the question is, do we want to wait for that information or do you guys feel comfortable moving forward or do we want to look for another bid? I'm comfortable with this bid. I don't have a problem. Where are you at over there, 68 failing? 
Well, I wish I'd have made my phone call. <laughs> so we had one more to look at. We can always push it off another two weeks. Yeah, it's not like it's something. That... Let me let me contact them. Let's at least do that. Okay. Would you like to remind them to do that? Okay. <laughs> He's gonna write it down. I'm gonna say, I didn't say that in the minutes. Um, I'm sure it didn't because I read it. I just said that I had a concern. Mm. Well, we'll remember that you have to be reminded. <laughs> okay, so um, as follow-ups, we will try to see what One Tree Hill um, charged North Central Public Health for their. Um, thing and then we will bring this back to the January that's 2021. I don't know what our next meeting is. 19th meeting. Yeah, the day that is. Yes. Okay. To be continued. Um, all right. 5.2 is discussion and possible action of management reorganization plan. Possible action items include and there's a whole long list of them. Um, so this is um, just circling back to the conversation we started last um, last meeting about the potential reorganization. And um, I had a free Friday, and so I dug in as much as I could um, to try to um, put things, at least give you draft documents of what this would look like if we wanted to make um, some updates. So. Where do you guys want to start? Well, where do you have a start? Well, I think we have to start with the chair and willing to take on presentation. Yeah, the, the big question <laughs> is, that is where we need to start. Yes. Because then from there, that drives some other things that I'd like to talk about. Yeah. So, so first question, I guess, from, and I think we can do this by consensus, is do does the reorganization sort of chart is that a comfortable management structure, or do we want to look at different different structures? I'm okay with that. Okay. That hasn't changed for me, so. <laughs> <laughs> so he's okay with so it. So he's too. okay with it too. Um, okay. So then, based on that, I've sort of laid out what I think the process for that would be. Um, I think the first step would be, which we would be doing this anyway, since this is the beginning of the year, we usually do our committee assignments and all that kind of stuff, which is later on the agenda as well. Um, and so I think what we would be looking to do is first having a motion to make um, Pat the road commissioner, road and lead commissioner, and Sherry, you the human services commissioner, and then working through the position descriptions as we see fit, if that sounds like a yeah. good approach. Yeah. Okay. So could I get a motion on, there's like a series of motions in your, <laughs> in your packet. So it would be the first one. <laughs> I move to a point, Commissioner Pat Shannon is the road weed commissioner and Commissioner Sherry Wilkins as the human services commissioner. Well, second. It's been moved and seconded that we appoint Commissioner Pat Shannon as the Road and Weed Commissioner and Commissioner Sherry Wilkins as the Human Services Commissioner. Is there further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay, so as I was going through the position descriptions, because um, I have not looked at them except when things have come up that we needed to address, you know, piecemeal. Um, what I discovered is even in the road and weed descriptions, those were not designated to the road and weed commissioner. Uh -huh. They were working under supervision of the county court. And so that's why all of those are in here as well, is I thought, let's just tidy up any and everything. So um, generally speaking, in the um, in the job descriptions in here, for the most part, every the only things that I really updated were the supervision received portions, where it says, um, you know, works under the general supervision. Any any place where it said county court, I tried to assign it to whoever that person I thought might be. So you know, whether that was you or me or that. Um, and let me think if there was anything else. 
but obviously the dates were updated. Um, in some places, let me think. One of my questions was, you know, we've been discussing um, for the past two years, bringing everyone up to a 40 hour week mm -hmm. and um, family services coordinator, public transportation coordinator, senior services and um, coordinator and transportation assistant are all 37 and a half. Whereas public transportation director, which is a whole other conversation, mm -hmm. is 40 hours, as is public transportation dispatcher. So we still have that disparaging part of um, what we've been trying to fix. So I wonder if that isn't a conversation that we need to have. The other conversation, now that I have um, motion myself into being the <laughs> human services commissioner is I'd like to sit down with each one of these people and talk about their Absolutely. their job description because I need to know anyway if I'm going to do this what since I'm going to do it you know what what is your position what do you do what does that mean what are you doing are you you know are these really the things that you're doing are, and is there more or less? So. Yeah. So how I kind of envisioned this was that this, to me, today is about getting the positions underneath each right. of the, the people. And so, because as you guys know, we did have some employees reach out to us and ask for exactly what you are saying. And I think that needs to be, definitely yeah. needs to be done. Um, but I think that's a longer or a bigger project. Yes, definitely. And so my suggestion would be that we get the supervision pieces of it. The, these are the existing job descriptions. So they're already currently in place and right. people are already operating under them. So I feel like if we can adjust the supervision portions and get everybody in alignment, and then each of us then can look at our own departments do those conversations with employees as we see fit uh, and as we are sort of supervising and, and finding areas where, hey, you know, maybe there's an efficiency here or maybe to your point about the 40 hours, I think, um, you know, that would be something that once you sort of dig into those departments, then you can make the determination is 40 hours needed? Does the employee agree? Because that's right. the CBA says that both us and the employee yeah. need to agree. Yes. So then that would allow you to have those conversations with those particular employees too, to see if they have an interest. Okay. So that would Sounds be my great. suggestion. Um, and then that would allow us then to do the deeper dive that right. has been suggested, which I think is a good idea because they haven't yeah. been touched since 2018. Right. So, so well, things have changed. Is that, is that the, I guess I was kind of under the impression that Lisa, when she came on, would have gone through and done it. Uh, some of it had to have been because some of the reporting was changed at that time. Yeah, so basically what we did is as things came up, so for instance, in the time since, since these were approved, we created the position of dispatcher. We created the position of director. Those were all after these were passed. So any new positions <laughs> or like the reclassification we just did of Kelly, for instance, those ones, as we were dealing with individual situations, we would update the job description, but we haven't done an overall yeah. Yeah. review. Um, Lisa, when she when she first arrived, did <laughs> send out the job descriptions to all the electeds and just said to them, please take a look at your focuses things. If there's anything you need us to update, work with me on that. And so it's sort of been piecemeal, honestly, as people have as we've run into things that we thought, oh, okay, we need to shift this. Yeah. And we've, we've done it sort of one at a time. I have um, all of those, if the commissioners would like me to email them to them. The ones I mean, that I the just, board has. Uh, I've just gone has, through and done a glance and I'm thinking, well, wait, wait. as you all know, equipment maintenance is a heartburn thing for me. And I don't <laughs> see it under any description anywhere. And um, so, yeah, I think there's definitely, I'd like to look through at least the books that 
I'll send them to you. Know, follow the I'm ones at, that the course. Even, even, I mean, so there's going to be some crossover. We talked some about, I think you said Daryl's supposedly tracking trans, the transportation vehicles maintenance at this He's point. doing the fleet. The transportation folks are doing the transportation. Um, so what's the difference between the fleet and the transportation? Fleet is the cars we would use. The county the transportation is the vehicles used just for the public transportation. So who's been responsible for that? The public transportation staff has been responsible for their own vehicle, for the that department's vehicles. And then the fleet vehicles, the ones the county employees use, Daryl is doing the maintenance on those. Well, we have millions of dollars worth of equipment and we don't say who's tracking what. <laughs> well, that's a discussion we've had too that we need to get the software to make that happen. Yeah. yeah. So let's do that. Anyway. Yeah, it's going to be a process, I think. Yeah. There's, there's, yeah. There's it's not going to happen overnight. That's for sure. Work that needs to be done. And definitely, it sounds like responsibilities, there might be some discussion we be had around responsibilities and what they truly are and what they think they are, you know, what, what that is. Mm -hmm. What's the best process as well? Okay, so where are we? Um, so if you guys are comfortable with the job descriptions that were presented and don't want to make any edits, at least at this point, right. again with the this is and this is just changing supervision. Yes, um, there were a few things like, for instance, under. Um, I think it was maybe under Terry's job description when Teresa looked at it, there was like a, originally there was a workers comp thing that yeah. we had actually moved under Teresa when yeah. we created her position. I think it's still there. We but removed it. We removed it out of Terry's because it, we, when we. Still um, on here. It is on there. I think I caught it after I did oh, that okay. because it, the yeah, sure fleet still, was on there and it, that one is both off that. now. The uh, administrator position in on this goal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but other than that, really, it's it's been um, mostly just updating the dates so that we those are accurate. Updating the um, supervision received, making sure that the um, titles are consistent um, throughout, so that the chain of command is is the same. And then uh, at the top under regular full time, some of them had 37 and a half hours, actually had it how many hours a week it was, mm -hmm. and some didn't. Ellen gave the feedback that it's helpful to actually have those hours at the top so that she has a reference to go back to and know what the position has been approved for. Um, so I went back and where there was missing hours, I put those back in um, based on what's already been approved by the court. So. So we just need to do that. I, I move to approve the revised position descriptions for the positions. Uh, do I need to read all these? Um, you can just say for all of the position descriptions and then I can list them. When, okay, when I'll I let you do that, that as presented. Okay. Oh, second. Uh, it's been moved and seconded that we approve the revised position descriptions for the positions <clears throat> of office manager, road lead departments, road master, Weed control officer, weed control assistant, juvenile director, planning director, building and grounds maintenance coordinator, custodian, library director, public transportation director, public transportation coordinator, public transportation dispatcher, public transportation driver, family services coordinator, senior services coordinator slash transportation assistant, senior meal site cook, senior meal site assistant cook, as presented. Is there further discussion? Yeah, um, now that you've read through those, I did have a question on <clears throat> transportation. Who's doing the dispatching right now? Um, we have a Tim that's actually the dispatcher, and then Sabrina is filling is her part time piece of that as well. Yeah. Sabrina's the senior person in my office. Yeah, we just have a temp filling in for a uh, six months, basically. Um, further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Moving on to the next one. 
the next piece of this and a specific packet, um, is consider approval of executive assistant to the county judge position description and salary schedule and reclassification of administrative assistant county court position. So this is sort of the next piece is getting our own staff for the county court um, kind of figured out. Um, so I worked with Teresa to update um, the position description to the executive assistant to the county judge. And basically what I did was take her current position. I looked at Lisa's, um, the chief of staff job description, pulled all of the things out that were not HR, that, so that still needed to be done in-house and added those to the new job description. That's basically the methodology I used. Um, so not too complicated. Um, the salary schedule, um, what is in alignment currently, or the proposed salary schedule with a director level position. Um, this is sort of a reflection of adding on, in addition to all of the um, things that Lisa was doing that were non HR, um, the grants that Teresa's going to take on, some of the other things that she's raised her hand for. Um, so that's what the reflection is of that. Um, questions, co initial comments. So from the fiscal side and budgetary side, we need to take <coughs> Teresa's perk wages, Lisa's wages, and switch back the benefits into that. If you looked at what is left, I mean, we got another position to talk about what is left for paying for HR consulting outside HR consulting. What's the budget impact up and down? So I don't have a good answer for you because I don't know what the HR will cost us. We don't really have an idea of what that is. Um, the I, I did actually go back to this HR answers place just to, I said, hey, we're looking at maybe doing this. Do you provide this kind of service? What does the pricing look like? I um, mean, it actually was pretty reasonable um, in terms of just kind of general, like this particular company has like a hotline, which I thought sounded really awesome, actually, that elected officials or whoever could just pick up and call and get their their questions answered and to subscribe to that um, was, and then there were some additional things like they would take on one project. So whether that would be revising our employee handbook or something, we could decide what that would be. I think it was, I wanna say it was definitely less than 10, maybe six to 8,000 was really? what they quoted me. But that does not include if we had to do say an investigation of an employee. Um, if we had a more, um, so they would answer sort of one-off questions, but if we wanted them to say, do a recruitment on our behalf, those would be an addition. And what my assumption is, is that they would be quoting us similar to our legal counsel. They would quote, quote us an hourly rate and then just bill us for the actual time used. So I would say as a base, six to 8,000. And then depending on what is happening with our folks and whether we're in the middle of needing to revise um, employee handbooks or you know other things um, that that could, I, well, realistically, well, maybe 15,000. Yeah, obviously maybe job descriptions might fall in that. And, that, and I don't know, administratively working with the department heads and the employees and revamping job descriptions, that's something we could do internally through our own administration? Or is there other projects like revising job descriptions that we know are on the horizon? Mm, so I would say some things that, that we don't have that maybe we could get some help, or like that we have, but maybe could be improved. Um, that Lisa had sort of started, but didn't finish. One would be like, we don't really have a consistent like onboarding process. So Ellen, right now, when you're hired, you sort of get a packet, but there isn't really like a consistent right. orientation. Yeah. So like having somebody come in and help us like set that up so that it's consistent no matter which department is hiring, those sorts of things. Um, they also offer things like doing an audit of our 
um, employee files to make sure that those are in compliance with law and that we're doing best practices, like those sorts of things that are not necessarily pressing, but that in the long term make us a more professional workplace. Um, so I think conceivably what we could look at doing from a budgetary standpoint is rather than tackling that all one year is maybe make a list and then year by year, it's like we just pick it off one at a time right. um, so that it's not a huge uh, amount to the budget. Um, so, and I don't know how, if that is, if the way that this company structures it is typical of consult, they're, they're, they're the only ones that I've spoken to so far. So I'm not sure if others would just quote us more like our attorneys do, just an hourly rate. And it just really depends on how much time we use. Um, I know for Ellen- something else he can help you find out how many, if there's other companies out there that are doing it. So what's the quote process for? So AOC has a listserv of administrators and HR folks. And so I, probably the best way would be just to send an email to them and ask them if anybody's contracting these services out and if so, who they're using. And then just following up with those, those companies that other counties are using. I assume that big counties are all doing theirs in house because I just can't imagine if you're in Multnomah County that you don't have probably well, a staff. Of, sure. Yeah, <laughs> like 15 HR people. Um, but I don't know on the smaller counties how they're managing their HR functions. So to answer your overall question, I think with Lisa's departure when it when it is and assuming that the assistant is not hired for you all for probably some period of time, I think we will be well within the, that overall, Nathan, I'm looking at you, probably well within the, in the South, the personnel. Just, just for salaries and kind of the recommendations, I think it's below. Yeah, I, I think we would see an initial savings in the first year. Yeah. Well, and that's something we need to get ironed out before we start the budget process too. Absolutely. So questions or comments on the job description itself. Do you think we have it close? I didn't have any questions. Yeah, I didn't. <clears throat> I guess I didn't look through it. There's so many job descriptions. <laughs> <laughs> I picked out those that to me were the most important, <laughs> which were those under whether I was going to be human resources <laughs> or not, and then our human human services, and then this one for sure, which is, and then the one for um, the administrative assistant for parties. Um, I will say because, as you know, we did have somebody reach out to us regarding the salary schedule for this, questioning why an assistant would be paid, what the assistant would be proposed to pay. So I wanted to address that. Um, first of all, the executive assistant, I think is different fundamentally than an administrative assistant. The expectation is that the work products, I mean, this really is sort of my right hand person, not dissimilar from when we had a county administrator that was doing that. And so just for reference sake, um, let me find this. So currently the proposal would be that the the step A for this position would come in at $55,893. I went back and looked and did the cost of living adjustments. If we had continued the court administrator position um, from 2018-19, basically when Sherry and I came in, currently that individual or that position would come in starting at $58,380. So it is less than what we would be paying if we had kept that administrator and put them through. And by the way, that number is based on a 37 and a half hour week. If that person was paid based on a 40 hour week, which is what Teresa works, mm -hmm. the starting would be 62,000. Mm -hmm. So I felt like this is not an unreasonable amount to pay based on past practices for this type of position supporting right. this this um, the court. So I just wanted to put that on the record. 
Any questions or are we ready to move forward on that? Mr. Shannon? We've got, to, we've got to get things in place. Yeah, we need to get. So we can move forward. We need to get organized. To this <laughs> right, we, we need to get organized. So I move to approve <clears throat> the executive assistant to the county judge position description as presented and to reclassify the position of administrative assistant to county court effective immediately. It's been moved and seconded that we approve the executive assistant to the county judge position description as presented and to reclassify the position of administrative assistant county court effective immediately. Is there further discussion? Um, so maybe this is was so in filling the other position, what's the process going to be? So assuming you guys are ready to move forward. Basically, what would happen is we would need to approve a position description for assistant to the commissioners. If you guys want to do that today, you, there's a draft in there. Um, we would also want to set the salary schedule for that. My suggestion would be um, that that mirror what the current or what the just previously reclassified admin assistant um, schedule looks like. Um, and those two things would need to be in place, and then we would need to, to start advertising. Um, in terms of recruitment and how you guys want to hire somebody, I would really leave that up to the two of you on how you want to address that with, with um, public meeting stuff. Most likely, you, we would need to either have one of you guys making the hiring decision, or if you wanted to somehow figure out how both of you could interview the person, I would need to circle back with our legal counsel and figure out that would probably have to be done. There's a process that you follow to do that. And so we would have to put that process in place. Yeah, I think we both need to be included somehow. Yeah, even if we're doing it separately. <clears throat> We do it separately, or maybe it's one of us in the room at a time. Two candidates, and then they interview separately, or we do it. Um. Well, one of the things could we okay? Could we vote on this, and then when yeah. we move into the next thing, figure out the next step? Because we need to do motion number five. Yes. Okay. So. It's been moved and seconded that we approve the executive assistant to the county judge position description as presented right. to reclassify the position of administrative assistant county court effective immediately. That's on the table. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Then I need an approval for the salary schedule. I move to approve the salary schedule for the position of executive assistant that the county judge has presented and to authorize staff to incorporate the position into the salary schedule for non representative employees. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we approve the salary schedule for the position of executive assistant to the county judge as presented and to authorize staff to incorporate the position into the salary schedule for non represented employees. Is there further discussion? So, as a county commissioner, Yes. With an executive under you, if there's information we need, is that? That's in the job description that she also supports other elected officials. Yes, yeah, so the idea would be um, once you have an assistant on board, most likely that person is going to have access to the same things that Teresa would have. And so if you needed documents or things, that person would, would find them. But if there's something obviously they can't find or that Teresa only has, then either you or the assistant, in the same way that other electeds, for instance, may need something from Teresa and can come down and ask her for it. So and especially for a while. I yeah. won't be off limits, Pat. I won't be off limits. <laughs> You're still allowed to talk to her. <laughs> We're gonna need her until we get our position filled. Exactly. Exactly. Um, yeah. Okay. So let's take a vote. The, the motion on the table is to approve the salary schedule for the position of executive assistant to the county judges presented, to 
to authorize staff to incorporate the position into the salary schedule for non-representative employees. Further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay. That one is taken care of. Let's move into, I just want to find the administrative assistance commissioners. Okay. So this is your person. So I have the, I have a, um, I, I put in a draft job description just so you had something to start with. Um, what I did on this one was take Teresa's now former job description, um, kept in the things that I thought were still applicable and supporting the two of you. Um, and then because we had also talked about the transition that uh, will happen at some point when Terry decides that she would like to retire. Um, I also took a look at her job description and put some of the things in from her job description, um, a lot of the administrative stuff, I did some crossover. And what I would envision is that um, perhaps this, this hire could, while Terry is still here, um, be sort of a backup, be learning under Terry, how these systems work, what grants are out there, all of those kinds of things. And then um, when Terry decides that she's ready, um, then this person would be well positioned then to just um, have that work go over to her or him. Um, yeah. Um, the other thing I want to note too, because there's always questions about this, um, the confidential that's in, in the job description mm -hmm does not mean that the job description is confidential, nor that the person <laughs> is handling confidential information. This is a legal term um, that basically means that this is why these people are not represented by the union, is that their role includes tasks in which they support the county court in its negotiations and interactions with the, with the union. That's what it means, basically, on the confidential side. So I just wanted to put that on the record because there were some questions about why there's confidential in both this job description and in um, and in the executive assistant to the to the judge, and that's why that's in there. Um, you'll see there's a line item or an essential function that's provide assistance in collective bargaining activities to the county commissioners. That is why that's designated as a confidential. Um, so my um, my recommendation with that is that this would be a non-represented position so that this person would be able to assist the two of you in whatever you need in terms of managing your union employees and also engaging in uh, in future negotiations. I'm having trouble finding this description. It's the very first one. <laughs> so I've gone by about 15 times yes. to tell me. Well, that's what I would <laughs> tell you. No, it was in there because I went last away. <clears throat> It's like page seven, eight, page eight. Well, again, I think this is a start. You know, this gives us some ground rules for hiring. And then, you know, as we, things are gonna come up that we may make some changes. Something in here may not, work out or we may need to add or mm -hmm. we can always oh and the other thing adjust. too I wanted to notice I also put um other duties as a sign. I put other duties as a sign <laughs> and I also moved the website stuff yes. over. Yeah, um, so that good. was the other piece yeah. uh, is getting that landed someplace uh, an employee. Questions, concerns, any edits that you'd like to make? I didn't have any at this time. So on the uh, on the 
the uh, collective bargaining side mm -hmm. responsibilities? Are you talking about kind of what Lisa was doing with collective bargaining? So not, not necessarily. I mean, it would depend. For instance, I could see this person say there was um, a proposal that the union put forward and um, and you guys, one of you guys was on the collective bargaining negotiations. You might go back to that person and say, hey, I want you to run the financials on how much this would cost. Or so those types of things, I would not foresee where Lisa was actually at the negotiating table. Yeah, I would, she would bring the information at this table both. Yeah, I would see this more as a support role. So one of, if one of you is at the negotiating table, this person then would be, for instance, might sit in and be taking notes or follow up if you had <clears throat> research that you wanted to dig into, wanted to know how another county handled something, for instance, and wanted them to run that down, those sorts of things. Um, so not as senior as what Lisa's responsibility was. Just to support. Are you okay? I'm okay. You don't look okay. <laughs> I, I didn't put draft motion language in, so I'm glad oh, no. to make the motion if okay. you want me to. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, so I, I move to approve the, the administrative assistant commissioner's position description as presented. I'll second. It's been moved and seconded that we approve the administrative assistant uh, commissioner's position description as presented. Is there further discussion? Uh, is is there a place in the agenda to discuss this process of hiring? Or? Absolutely, we can do that next. Yeah, I have a um, motion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Yeah, because now we need to reach out to your executive assistant so she can help us. <laughs> <laughs> so the other Get piece of there. this is that in order to advertise, we probably want to set the salary schedule as well for this position. Right. Um, I did not presume what that would be because um, I wasn't even sure if you guys would be ready to move on the um, position description. So what my recommendation would be on in your packet, you have a non-represented salary schedule. Um, the admin assistant county court um, starts at 41301. And so my recommendation would be that we adopt that um, what, what's on this document as admin assistant for county court as the admin assistant for county commissioners. Um, and that's sort of our entry level admin. Right. It's right. consistent yeah. with yeah. Um, similar positions in the union. Yeah. Uh, is that? Yeah, that works for me. Yeah, yeah that just makes sense. Okay, so I'll make the motion then. Okay. I would move to approve the salary schedule for the position of administrative assistant commissioners um, to say mirror that of the admin assistant county court um, and to authorize staff to incorporate the position into the salary schedule for non-represented employees. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we approve the salary schedule for the position of administrative assistant commissioners to mirror that of admin assistant county court um, and to authorize the staff to incorporate the position into the salary schedule for non-represented employees. Is there further discussion? Yes. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay, so that position has been created. Um, so on to recruitment for that. How do you guys want to handle that? Um, <clears throat> it's your person. So, yeah, well, so yeah, Teresa and I are here. We to... had a process in place to kind of go through applications and narrow it down. First of all, where are we going to advertise? How long are we going to advertise? So um, what we can do, it, obviously we typically would advertise locally in the Times right. Journal. Um, if you guys wanted a wider base, we could look at doing something like Indeed or sort of a, a wider thing. The county AOC, previously sometimes we have sent job descriptions to AOC as well. 
And I think they have a place on their website where they keep them. Um, so we could also look at doing something like that. Well, they um, said on the news today there's 10 million available jobs. <laughs> yeah. And we know within the county there's a comparable position of the Right. Yeah. Um, it's going to, I mean, I don't know what it pays, but. There's going to be some competition for position even locally. Yeah. Um, what you what we could do is we could start with advertising locally and just seeing what the what the applic applicant pool looks like. Um, and if we're not getting the type of responses or the number of responses. Somewhat, though, we're looking I mean, we make it a little more difficult to hire, which instantly by throwing the IT, there's going to be some talents there. And, uh, well, it's not really IT, it's just the web page because I just 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 taking care of our web page because IT has gone now yeah, to completely. the So the only thing we're asking this person to do is to maintain the web page. Well, okay, that's right. No, we not, talked about that before. Team, they, right. they are going to do right. the other company's going to do some right. of the stuff. Right. Uh, the yeah. Kelly's going to do yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So let's do um, what we normally do, which is Times Journal, our web page. Um, well, it probably makes sense to reach out to the OC too. Just yeah, I think so too. Okay. Just, you know, put it out there and see, you know, there might be people looking to relocate. Somebody but, that's wanting to move. Right. Would you like us to do like Eastern Oregonian too? Or that's probably a good that's idea. a good idea. Okay. Because sure. not everybody gets the time to read in their own. And I'm thinking regionally, maybe that's so many awesome. people don't get newspaper too. Yeah. Any um, okay. Is there, excuse me, is okay. there a community bulletin, bulletin board in Arlington that you There's would want to put it up on? I could send it to you. To go, we yeah, could... we need to put it at the back in the post office and okay. do outside boards. And, yeah. So I'll send that to you guys and we would be. Yeah, if you could get like to... six or eight copies, we can get it. Okay. Or you can send it to Yeah, email to you. Okay. Yeah. Then, yeah, we can do that. Good job. <laughs> Through you um, <laughs> let you handle it. You've got it. So, in terms of okay, so applications will come in. Where would you like those applications? Do you want them to go into Teresa? Yeah, and then if she could forward them out, yeah, I think that's so a logical thing to do. Yeah, we're gonna inundate you just to start with. <laughs> And at some point, we're going to have to say, I'd like to review these. Right. Say, if you'd like to review these, what's that process? Right. Well, so what we could do, I'm just trying to think through how to do this in a way that will, so that people don't think they're going to have to interview in a public meeting. Right. Yeah, I don't <laughs> want that to happen either. That's um, not right. So what I think we could maybe do, let me make sure, and I'll, I will run this by legal counsel and make sure that I, I'm accurate in this. What if we, I think we could come up with a scoring guide that each of you and anybody else that you would like to look yeah, at the resumes, yeah. you wanted to pull somebody like else in, party. Yeah. Um, that you could first score them before the interviews. Um, so that we have consistency in, in what we're looking for. Based on their application. You guys could submit your scores then to Teresa so that you don't see each other's, which would prevent you from having a public meeting. Teresa then could compile the scores from everybody who scored them and then let the group know who the top, depending on how many candidates you want to interview, whether that's three or five or all of them, depending on how many applications come in. Um, 
then she could tell you, okay, these are the candidates that scored highest based on everybody's initial score sheets. In terms of the interview process itself, what you could look at doing is for these candidates, they would basically be going through two interviews. So it would be like maybe Pat and somebody else doing an interview and Sherry and, and say there's four on the hiring committee, Sherry and somebody else and having the candidates just cycle through those two groups, you guys keep being a separate. Yep, you guys each scoring based on the interviews, giving that to Teresa, and then based on that, um, her basically saying who your top candidates were based on your scores from the interviews without you two ever being in the same room. I think that might work, but I need to double check with legal counsel that that's not still a violation of meeting law. But that would be my recommendation. We're not having a conversation or making a decision on that based on that. Exactly. And then probably what you would need to do then is one of you would be the actual hiring person. And so would take the compiled scores that Teresa would compile from the two interviews and actually be the one that made the offer and did the negotiation with the successful candidate. Okay. That would be my recommendation. Does that sound... Yeah. For the person, it's a it's an extra hoop or two, but maybe that's not a bad thing no. right, to do that. Well, better than sitting in the public meeting. Yeah. Being out there for everybody to. Yeah. It's nerve-wracking enough having a job interview without being on, on YouTube. Zoom. <laughs> on YouTube. That would be my favorite. <laughs> being zoomed in yeah. forever on YouTube forever. So how about this? We will at least get the recruitment documents that out super. Thank you. and see what kind of applicants we're getting back. And I'll just ask Teresa to um, keep you guys up to date and forward them to you. Um, and then I will dig out, I think we probably have a scoring sheet from when we hired Teresa um, that could easily just be recycled um, for you guys to, to use to review the applicants as they're coming in. Does that sound? Workable? Yes. Yeah. Okay, we will put that in motion. Um, this and afternoon. then as we get closer, we can recruit an extra person for each of us. To yeah, think about who who you would like to be. I think when we hired Teresa, um, that interview panel was me, Chet, and Rachel. Um, so we had an employee and an elected, and another elected. Um, so depending on what you guys want to do. Um, that might be a nice combination too. Yeah. We'll figure that out. Okay. Um, anything else on that? If not, the last piece of this is discussing the scope of work for contracted human resources request for proposals. So before I went out and started talking to HR firms, I wanted to make sure I was on the right track in terms of what services we're actually looking for. Um, the document, which is just kind of bullet pointed, it was not, um, basically was taking the bullet points out of Lisa's job description that were HR related. Um, and then also looking at some of the HR consultants websites and just looking at what services they provided and trying to guess which ones would be a good fit for us. Um, so I did share this document with the elected officials um, to get their feedback. I heard back from some of them, not all of them. Um, Ellen did weigh in with a couple of suggestions and those have been included. Um, and the rest of the electeds that got back to me said that it was fine. So um, that just gives you kind of an overview and I wanted to see if that is close to what we're looking for if we're looking for something more. I think it is, but I'll find it. We're good. <laughs> a lot of documents in here. Yeah, I think that covers 
what we're looking for. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, and I think for most of these, my hunch is that we'll have one of two models. It'll either be just like our legal counsel, where it's like there's right. just a flat rate and it doesn't matter what we, you know, so so this can be very <laughs> flexible. Um, or they'll quote us a um, retainer and say these are sort of the core services. And then if you want anything on top of that, here's, um, you know, here's the amount per hour. Um, so I think there's a lot of flexibility. Uh, which, which to me makes sense because some of these just aren't on, ongoing things that happen. It's going to happen, you know, developing the new employment employee orientation process would be a process in itself. And then once that's in place, yeah, then, then, we, then we run with that. So yeah, yeah that exactly. would make sense to me to have. And some of it, honestly, it, what I found in just managing people is it ebbs and flows. Like sometimes you have a lot of questions come up about something and then you'll go for months without really having any, you know, any issues or, and frankly, we don't have a lot of turnover. So like recruitment is kind of fits and starts, you know, yeah. sometimes we have a few positions. We do have quite a few people who are um, nearing retirement, I would say. And so we may have a lot more recruitment than we have in the past. Um, so in the those kinds of things. Right now. yeah, we do right at the moment we do. Um, so I'm going to check with legal counsel. I think with consulting services of this type, I don't think we have to go through a formal procurement process if you guys don't want to. I think I can just reach out to HR firms and ask if they do this kind of work and if so, if they're interested in bidding it. Yeah. Um, so if you guys are comfortable yeah. with that, I think that would be the way I would approach it. Yeah, I like that. Okay, so I will, um, I'll circle back with that HR answers and ask them to give us a formal proposal. And then I'll also see if I can get from other counties who they may be using um, and see if we can get at least two to look at, um, but hopefully three um, ideally. So we have a sense of what the market actually is. Um, sound good? Yep, sounds good. Okay, um, that's all for that piece. This is quick and easy. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, okay, so we're under new business, discuss, propose, nor core bylaw changes. Sherry, this is you. It is. Um, as it says in the brief, um, the board and the management team at NORCOR have been discussing the changes in the bylaws. And with our attorney, um, Jeremy Fole, we have revised um, the bylaws and the big change is taking the board members from um, six to four. Previously, the four were one representative from each county from the commissioners or judges, and then a sheriff and a um, juvenile director from one of the counties. The sheriff was a voting member, but the juvenile director was not. Um, so with many discussions, um, this is what council has suggested. This is what ma the management team, the management team is um, Sheriff Lowry, who is the managing sheriff for Norcor. Um, Dan Lindhorst, who is the um, adult um, jail commander. Molly Rogers, who is the juvenile director um, representative to the uh, juvenile side of the system. And um, Jeff, who is the director of the juvenile side. And so they've worked together um, to help us come up with this. And then, rather than an administrator, that's what we've been using is this administrative team. It's working out, been working out really well. So um, I don't know if you have any questions or concerns. Or, what, what drove the change? Um, 
It seemed to be out of balance um, because of the five voting members. One county got two votes. And so that that was kind of a problem. Um, the sheriffs have a certain type. I mean, they're, what do I want to see? They're in favor. They are in favor of it. They are, and but their their duty is to the jail. So you know, for one of them to be on the board is kind of is an off thing as well. So anyway, that I just wanted to bring it out to you. We will be um, voting, I believe, to adopt at our meeting this month. Okay. So if you guys have any big concerns, I'll take them back. And if not, um, I. I believe this is a good move. Yeah, and it sounds like if everybody's on board, I don't know why we would right. not be. Yeah, in. yeah, yeah. The management team and and the sheriffs are both in, in support of that. So. Sounds good. Okay. Any questions, Pat? Yeah. All right. Um, <coughs> next one is consider approval of 2022 <coughs> county court board and committee assignments. Thank you. Um, so I took a stab at updating, um, and, and made the presumption that you would be the human services commissioner, Sherry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I did indicate that <laughs> you were, you were the, open to it. I kind of, yeah. So, um, these are basically... I, I really didn't make much changes other than I moved Korea officially down to Pat. We had voted on that separately, right. um, but I moved that there. I also, Sherry, under yours, took Eastern Oregon mm -hmm. Coordinated Care and the LCAC, um, which is the Local Community Health Partnership. I moved those under you because Teddy is the one that, that is connected with Teddy's work. Okay. And so I thought it made more sense so, for you to be okay. Yeah, I'm not familiar with the Gillen County Local Community Health yeah, Partnership. Is that an board. existing part of the board? Yes. So that is, it is, was formerly the LCAC is how it was. Uh, and this is for our Oregon Health Plan um, management, um, Eastern Oregon Coordinated Care Association, with, which is a GOBI um partnership um, that provides services for our low-income folks through Oregon Health Plan. Um, statutorily, they are required to have local community um, advisory councils. Um, traditionally, the judge, I've sat on that, um, and Teddy is the administrator for that. She is the does the minutes and helps Marcy with the agendas and support materials. And so um, I thought it made more sense so that Sherry can see um, what that work is to, act, to have her actually be on the board. The Eastern Oregon Coordinated Care, so there's a, so the Local Community Health Partnership Board, that is the local advisory council. Then there's a regional one, and that is what the Eastern Oregon Coordinated Care Organization Community Advisory Council alternate is. That is all of the counties that are within that regions and um, representatives to help guide um, GOBI slash BOCCO on providing a health plan, working health plan benefits. So just so you know, the Marshall for Public Health District will probably go away. Yes, it will. <laughs> I left it on there for the next six months. Um, I'm the alternate, as you can see. Um, so that one will go away. Um, and I think that was really it. Um, I took off. Um, normally, I would be sitting on community corrections. That board went away when we um, dissolved um, Tri-County Community Corrections, so I removed that. So from a, from a local health authority, will we form a board? That is to be determined. Technically, we are the board. Right. Um, so if we wanted to have 
as we're working through that with um, OHP, if we wanted to have more voices at that table and do say like an advisory committee thing, I'm not sure exactly how that would work, but I think there would probably be room to do that. And we would probably just make appointments then mid-year once we have that in place and figure out what that needs to look like. So if we wanted to have like both health districts some right. representatives or something like that. I'm sure we could figure out a way to do that. That makes sense too, just to yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, any questions, concerns about um <clears throat> Sherry, you want to stay on Norcor? Yeah. Okay. I just wanted to make sure because you know Pat's given up health districts. So if yeah. you wanted to I wouldn't no. have any problem taking them up. <laughs> I enjoy my um, Okay, if there are no changes, can I get a motion to approve the committee assignments as presented? I would make a motion to approve the 2022 County Board and Committee assignments as presented. I'll second. It's been moved and seconded that we approve the 2020 County Board and Committee assignments as presented. Is there further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay, we are moving on to announcements and next meeting. Uh, next meeting is January 19th, 2022. We are scheduled to be in Arlington, weather permitting. Oh right! Yeah. <laughs> you don't want to have to drive. I might be on the. Stuff. I might be on the Zoom. Um, if we have one, I still don't understand why we couldn't set Zoom up here and have the meeting down there. Because I'm sorry. we need because we need to have this little guy, the owl, in order to capture our audio. Or why, if we logged on to Zoom, would we be on to capture the audio? could be on. I guess we couldn't be in discussion. Well, we couldn't all talk at the same time in the same room. Is it on each of our on each of our because we get feedback? Right, it, but, it? but you couldn't mute none of the other do it. <laughs> That's just the, talk in the Zoom meetings when you're communicating. You have to do. It. You yeah, but you're it. but you're in your own little space, so they aren't. Each other. That's it should be no different than shutting the dog bark and hope to be shutting you off. <laughs> Which I'm sure you do. <laughs> <laughs> and you wanted that meeting, Commissioner Shannon, at the ground that was building, correct? Yeah, it's all improved and really good. Yeah. Is okay. it? Okay, they've got the panels up all over the walls. That, oh, it yeah. is. That's that made a big difference. Had, in there, Who? So had, yeah. had an option in there. The, the Oregon Sheep Grower Association is it's still got work to do to, to finish it. I don't think it didn't make it easy. Is it the work. same room that we used in the past? No. No, if you want to go in that room, drinks are on you here. can only have drinks, buy oh. drinks from me, and play lottery or pool. Oh, okay. <laughs> or watch TV. So the meeting will be in the big, 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 the big room. room. Okay. And it's really, really good. And is right. it, ooh, should we call Leah to make arrangements? I'm actually, uh, no, you can. I can, it's just open. You know, I just get it. You got it. Okay. You got it. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, Sherry, what do you have going on? Um, well, I, I want to tell you why I laughed because um, my husband's fishing and he lost his reel and his pole and everything oh, overboard. No. But I think he still has his cell phone, which is what he usually loses over the uh, overboard. <laughs> um, I have uh, nothing on my calendar. Isn't that interesting? Um, <laughs> I guess that's worthless. Um, yeah, Norcor on the 20th, um, and we will be discussing the, the new bylaws, and then, of course, capital this month. And um, that's the only thing I've got going on for sure, sure. Plus, you've got all those new employees to. Oh, well, yes, I, I guess <laughs> I, I'm. The weather needs to change so I can spend that some full days here. If you, you know what, Lisa's office is open to if either of you ever want to work out of it, just let us know and we can get it set up. No, that'll be just plug and play. Temporarily. For now, yeah. 
But even um, what we could look at doing, even once the assistant is hired, is setting up a workspace yeah, for you guys um, so that you have a space that you, and I, we can talk to Kelly about maybe then setting up the way mine works is it's just a monitor and I, anybody can plug their um, laptop into it. So that way either of you could come in and work off of it. Um, it wouldn't be just Sherry's or just yours. Well, that's probably a good idea. Okay, we'll put that on the list of things to work with Kelly on. So we're both going to be going through some position. Right. Mm -hmm. right. And if you need to meet with people privately or, yes. you know, whatever, it's nice to have a space to do that. Because um, yeah, my people all have shared offices. So, yeah. In order to sit down with someone individually. Yeah. Um, anything else, Sherry? Not off the top of my head. Can I go home? Uh, shortly, Pat, okay, what do you got? Well, I'm at North Central know. next Tuesday. North Central Health board meeting next Tuesday. Oh, and, um, I did get an email. We had talked about David Chu. Yes. And he was in some brain lab. I don't know if you're having on the brain lab, but I got this email. Yeah. He reached out to me at the end of the month, I think, saying uh, that. Uh, he apologized for the delay getting back, but he'd been had some oral surgeries and had been to Malaysia and stuff and had had the opportunity to do the thing. Uh, if possible, I'd like to schedule a day to drive over and discuss the lab office and other facility contraction opportunities. Please let me know the real estate some time for work for you for us to meet. By just saying my uh, open schedule and days I had available. He sent back um, your open meeting dates are noted. Thank you. I'm Looking forward to traveling over to Arlington soon. I must wait uh, on an ocean container to be released this week from Seattle, of course, delivered to our warehouse and phone before I provide the dates that work best for me to visit. It will take a day or two. Our group is very committed to relocating i Corps US Northwest product, product production and distribution to Arlington and great growth rentals off of the area. So there may be something there. This young lady has taken the industrial park. Oh, did you? Yes, that was the part of the trade. Yeah. So yeah, if you, it's up to you. If you want to show them around or if you want me to do it, just loop me in, I'm happy to. I have a seat in the building that I will broadcast to you. I should do that. I mean, it's going to be a drive around with him initially and see if they're serious about doing something. Or... The park. Space to actually work and for that stuff works and what their needs are that we can drive it. They originally talked about <clears throat> um, some warehousing, uh, significant warehousing, and they're interested in uh, possibly getting some buildings up in the Mesa and the buildings in Wyoming. So if it's all true, it's, it's yeah, that'd be awesome, exciting, cool. And then Teresa has possession of the spare key. Anything else? That is okay. I have got, let me see what I've got going on. Um, the 911 board is going to be meeting on Tuesday, the 18th here in Condon. Um, let's see, as a reminder, we have Tri-County Court coming up on the 26th of January. I think that's in Wheeler County, isn't it? It's in Wheeler County. So hopefully we'll be getting notification from them shortly and asking for agenda items we might need to we might need to circle back with them and remind them but it's their it's their turn it's their turn um we also I just got a, a calendar invite for the northeast and greater eastern regional solutions advisory committee will be meeting on the 14th of um january and also, NCAED has formed a work group to look at us joining them, um, and they will be meeting. They did an initial meeting, I think, in December, um, and their next meeting will be on the 21st of January. So I'm planning on um, listening into that. And I think that's all. I have a message that uh, Sabrina Wagner would like to speak. Okay. Sabrina. Okay, am I there? 
Yes, you're here. All right. So I just want to, I guess, um, reminder that we have some grants available that need to be turned in um, by January 14th for transportation. Um, so I just need to, like if Sherry, before you run back to Arlington, where the weather's good, <laughs> swing by. Um, and then also, Pat, if you have questions, um, clearly there's obviously lots of questions that need to be answered. So feel free to stop by the transportation office and ask questions as well so that everybody kind of knows what's going on. And that's it. Thanks, Sabrina. Thank you, All Sabrina. Right. That does remind me, and I talked to Dewey today because we will have road maintenance expenses and issues coming up that have to be submitted to waste management by the 15th. And he has the budget numbers and then a contact with Alan down there so they can get in their budget that is post these agreements states we have to notify them what we plan to do on that road that it's going to cost them and all that. Okay. Um, so we will not meet before the 15th. Um, and I don't know if we need to, or if the idea is. I think it's to some, I mean, because we're talking about substantial amount of money, nobody knows where that falls today. And Do you have a sense of what? I know the road needs to be. Okay. Um, he just got a final person. He got his second bid yesterday, so. Does he. Is the work that he needs to do from the county side, because it's a cost share for. Has it already been budgeted? Or do you know? Nathan's saying no. Yeah, that's not going to happen until we in the summer anyway. So. Well, because the reason I asked is I'm trying to figure out if, if it had already been budgeted, then technically the court has already approved it. Um, if it has not been budgeted, then it hasn't been approved by the court. To expend the money. So until yeah, the budget. Yeah. What well, we? I, you know, no, well, I guess I have to ask him. They're just I'm, looking for an estimate right now. Is there? <clears throat> well, waste management, as per the host fees agreement, needs to know what the costs are going to be if those repairs are going to happen in 2022. Sure. So, so they can put it in their 2022 budget, which doesn't run in line with ours. Hey Dewey. So Dewey's on. Dewey, are you there? I'm just wondering if it would normally, if it's an amount that like he's not going to be coming to the budget committee asking for. We're not talking about moving the road, for right. instance. Right. So if it's a small enough amount <clears throat> that it would be part of the normal maintenance. Yeah, they're probably trade one project for another one. Right. And it's usually yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing whatever's slated for 2022 or even what's left of 2021. He's only, he can only do so many projects. So how about that? From my perspective, I feel comfortable if the amount that he is going to be needing to spend to um, to repair the road is not going to drastically increase his budget for 2020 for the next year. I am comfortable with you signing off on that, Pat, looking at what his plan is and saying, yes, that's good, assuming that it doesn't have huge budget financials. If it's going to have huge budget financials, I think we might need to do a special meeting and look at it. Because I just, I feel like we would be authorizing a department to make a huge commitment on an expenditure that hasn't been reviewed by anybody. I think this gets down to, it's going to get down to some negotiations with understanding of what, and, I, and this is part of the problem, Nathan, is um, 
there's been a request to find out how much money they have already spent for that project that they've already done uh, uh, allocated to the county with post use agreement. And there's some discrepancies on what they think that is and what we think that is. That's a big part of this. Well, it sounds like I'm thinking they're thinking seven or eight hundred thousand and we got like three hundred thousand this year's budget. And then those are just numbers that I couldn't remember. Well, we can explore that further offline if you want to file that in. Yeah. It sounds like there's a consensus of the court <clears throat> that we do believe that the repairs are needed. From my perspective, if it fits within what we've traditionally budgeted and Dewey is just shifting from, say, a different project that he would have done and doing this one instead for next year, and, they're, and you're figuring out what the cost share would be with waste, I, I feel comfortable doing that. If there's a significant budget okay. impact, then I feel like it needs to come to the court to have a formal well, there's, review. There's some accruals, too, that come with the host agreement. So yeah, there should be accrued money. It's just a matter. Of, I'm not sure where it's at in the budget. I'm trying to find it though. I mean, no, you can see it there. It, it, it all functions. Okay. You can see it on the revenue line, and I think it's three hundred thousand or so. Yeah. But we've got the history. So we Bottom line is when you get to that. Final what's in there, then what's left, we have to pay 20%, they got to pay 80. Yes. So if there's a significant amount in there, it's a, it's a crude board, but I don't know that we've got that much, what they think. So, so I, from my vantage point, I feel comfortable as long as there's not a significant budget implication. Um, for you just to, re to review it yourself, Pat, and authorize Dewey to have that conversation with Waste about what the cost share would look like. Um, if And then if you look at it and determine that actually this is going to cost more money than has been budgeted previously for road maintenance, then get back yeah, to us and we can do a special. Yeah. Okay. That's how I, I feel. I don't know how you feel, Sherry. Don't forget you want you want Teresa to call you. <laughs> uh, anything else for the good of the order? Okay, it's eleven twenty-two. I will adjourn the meeting.